Hey, hey, what do you say, India? This is Bobby Blitzum Overkill. That's right. And we're on Metal Money. Mr. Bobby Blitz, how are you doing? Hey man, how are you? I'm doing good, how are you? Fine. Congratulations, new album is just about to release in a week. How excited are you for this album, you know, given that, you know, you have been on fire from last three decades? Well, I tell you, you know, I mean, it's still a great opportunity, and I think that that's the key to it, is that, you know, Overkill has always been a band that's excited about its, uh, its current status, and, and always trying to, let's say, even with our, in our own camp, Right. Raise the bar, that raise the bar of that status. So, if, if we're relevant in the current day with with White Devil Armory, that's really the goal, and and I think that we obviously achieved that. So, it's uh, I don't know about being on fire for the last three uh, decades, but I can say that there's been a you know a lot of uh, work and and uh, progression, even that uh, small steps to uh, to keep that relevancy in the current day. True, absolutely right. Now you know. For the last 34 years, you know, according to what I have felt, there has there has not been a band on this planet that has fought through age, subgenre limits, changing times, attitude of metal fans by putting out consistently great material. And Overkill has proved it every time. Oh, that's a great compliment. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if there's a question in there. That's more of a statement. <laughs> I, I do agree with that. This album... I've been listening to the album from you know from few weeks and I could figure out that you know you guys don't have to release a great album to to cement a legacy of greatness but you guys just managed to do it anyway <laughs> don't you think so you know it's not about you know it's not about what we were with regard to legacy it's about what we are right you know I, you know I, I I've been telling people you know for years that if if I, I, I can't do it, I, I won't do it. Uh, if he can't do it, I know he won't do it. Uh, same with the other guys. Uh, you know, so what we have here is, is something that's an opportunity. So when we look at ourselves and think of ourselves as a hungry young band, so it's not about legacy. It's more about uh, uh, proving, you know, uh, being, uh, still being able to prove that we can compete with, let's say, uh, you know, the, the younger part of the genre, uh, the newer part of the genre, uh, still hold our integrity but compete at a high level. I, I think if, if, a, if a band can do this, then it's not about legacy, it's still about that, that forward movement. And that's where the excitement comes from. You know, you don't have to, but if you're excited about doing it, then why not if you have the opportunity? And I think that that's just the philosophy that Overkill has lived by now for, for many years. I agree with you. That, that that brings me to the question that there's still that hunger in the band to 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 cross barricades and unleash hell. So every album which you guys work and release has that additional twist, you know, of thrash in it. Uh, how how has been the songwriting for all these years with you and you know the other members being strictly professional and coming up with great material? Well, you know, I, I think uh, the bottom line is that it has to be a band. Uh, and, and, you know, I'll, I'll speak about, for instance, White Devil. And, it's, uh, you know, it, it starts with Dee Dee and it ends with me. But it goes through with everyone else. So it has to have the feeling that there's a band there. Okay. Now, I've known Dee Dee Rooney since, you know, uh, for, for over 30 years now. And, and we obviously have a, a great relationship when it comes to working together. Absolutely. But some of the other guys are, you know, there's Dave Winsk at 15 years. There's Derek Taylor at 12. There's... Well, I'm with Mickey at nine years. Now, to, to get, you know, a full, uh, uh, vibrant, uh, vital feeling, all these guys have to be involved. And I think that that's, you know, what our key is. I, I don't think that there's, you know, we don't really deviate from a formula too much because we've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. But I think that in, individuals within that formula, we try to push our limits individually. You know, if I go into White Devil Armory out of, the electric age, uh -huh. what I want to do is kind of improve upon myself. I want to say, okay, maybe I can hit that higher note. Maybe I can record in different places. Maybe I can, maybe I can write a little bit differently. Okay. And I do think at the, at the end of the day, it's overkill. 
But if we're trying to push uh, our boundaries, even even by a little bit, I think that we're still learning. And if we're still learning, I think this is where the kind of that you know that hellish thrash comes out of that we're still learning how to. Uh, Let's say in, a, in our own minds, uh, master. Oh, wonderful. What can I say? The new single, uh, Amaris, which was released along with the music video, how has been the response from your fans? Oh, it seems pretty, it seems that I'm very, you know, to some degree, there's an expression in the States or, or in English, it's called, uh, it's called preaching to the choir. And that's what I think we're doing. We're trying to get that the choir already is, is anticipating this. You know, that. Their, their, their mouths are wet and their and their, and their hands are sweating. It's as if you know this is what they expect from us every two years. So there's a yeah, there's a great anticipation with this, and I think that with that anticipation, and I agree with that. And what about the lyrical approach this time for the new album? I mean, is there any concept behind the album title and the songs? The thread of the word armory. So so I used that as my thread and started creating. You know, kind of a character that I wrote short stories about, and it, it's very simple. These are emotionally based short stories, mm-hmm. but it's not necessarily a concept. But Armourist, for instance, is uh, oh, geez, I, I suppose the generalization is uh, is the the angriness uh, or the aggression of loneliness. If there's any concept to it, it's, it's all about this character uh, or this parade through the music, and and it's it's just the realization of. Uh, let's say, uh, if, if loneliness is the first step, mm-hmm. and the last uh, song is, is in the name, and there's a unified feeling of camaraderie by the time uh, we get to this, it's how he sheds that loneliness through uh, the other eight songs. Uh, how he uh, gets rid of his pride and bitter pill. Right. How, he understands his, how he understands his value and his commitment and King of the Rats Bastards. Uh, how he he uh, always wished for uh, uh, a swift death. Wow, that that's brilliant. I mean, what can I talk about your vocals as well? I mean, it to me it sounds more and more aggressive on every album. You know, at this age where other vocalists are, you know, would have been dead at the energy level. Hats off to you. Oh, thanks, man. I, you know, I, I stopped smoking. Um, uh, geez, about uh, a year and a half by the time I was recording it. Uh-huh. And you know it was a, it was a new thing for me. You know, I mean, you, you have more air. You have, uh, you know, I had more air. I had a, a, a cleaner voice. I could hit higher notes. I could hit lower notes. Right. And you know, it, maybe that's that learning process that I'm talking about. That if, if you have a new tool, learn how to use it, and and then the band will always appear to be relevant or or valued in the current day. That that's. Awesome, and let me, uh, you know, I would like to know about how important do you feel is consistency, you know, when it comes to overkill, you know, how do you keep, you know, check of, uh, you know, so many years of existence the band has been, how important do you feel is the consistency when it comes to thrash metal? Well, I mean, you know, for us, it's just a natural thing. I mean, I would obviously have to say consistency is very important because it's part of our personality. I mean, you know, there's two ways to look at consistency. Is it because we're so committed to this, or is this the only thing that we can do? Absolutely. But we're not going to over, we're not going to overthink it. We're just going to come with our own results. So I don't think of Overkill as being a band that tries to stay consistent. Mm-hmm. I always think of Overkill as a band that's excited to have an opportunity, and from that leads to its consistency. Because, you know, in our heads, we have a winning formula. In our heads, it's always successful. So, you know, it's a good place for us to live is on that consistent line. Right. I completely agree with that. Now, if I go back to your discography, albums like Horoscope and I Hear Black, you know, has that abundance of heavy groove-laden oriented compositions as opposed to the fast tempo-based songs. So, what was the motivation behind slowing it down at that time? Well, I mean, that's a good point, because I, I think that this is, you know, still, even though we were six records in by I Heard Black, it's still to us, uh, in relation to 17 records, a development stage. Right. You know, we're still learning new things. Now, you know, we were, we were born of, of punk rock and the new wave of British heavy metal, but we were also big Black Sabbath fans. Absolutely. You know, so it was... You know, so you, know, you don't want to neglect these things 
Yeah, you know, that uh, it gives you the excitement that when you were a kid makes the music right for you. And I think we started injecting that Sabbath as one of the things by horoscope. Right. And I think it became, you know, it became something that we made unto ourselves. And becomes one of the tools, I think, that we show in, in songs like Bitter Pill or the center section of uh, Freedom Rings on the new record. So, oh. so it remains with us all these years. That's wonderful. Now, now your voice has got that aggression of punk and, and the tunefulness of classical metal and even rock. Now, you guys are from New York, so apparently we all know that, you know, the New York thrash metal has that punk influence to it as well. And even the, you know, since the, the particular city is known for hardcore scene as well. So how important has it been to you to retain this element in your music? Well, I think it's I think it's only natural. You know, I, I remember being uh, you know a young man and, and leaving high school right. and and going to to the university and you know the university was uh, I wanted to be in New York because of its music scene. You know, and that there was you know that there was a great punk music scene. There was you know the Ramones. There was New York Dolls. There was uh, Television. There was the Heartbreakers. There was you know end and end. And and to be involved in that and be so close to it. You felt part of it, so so I think that it is important because you know the idea was the things of youth that you get when you're developing as a person are, are, are many of the things you find that you bring with you later in life. Right. You know these are these are those, are those loves, uh, and, and I think in, in my personal case, and I know for sure in Dee's case that you know that early punk New York scene was one of those things that that attracted us on a you know on a very high level absolutely that's i'm really glad to hear that bobby what's about what about the tour which different countries and continents are going to unleash you know in uh, 2014 and even next year well you know we we look forward to touring i think that the, you know the thing for me that you know the most exciting element about being in overkill is doing a live show it's absolutely. just that you know it's something that we you know, it, it's that still that feeling of risk. You know, it, it's immediate. You either have instant gratification or you have instant failure. You know, so that's where the you know that's where the risk comes from, and with risk comes excitement. So you know, we start in the, we start in the U.S. in September uh, through Europe in October and November. Uh, some Central American shows come in afterwards. Uh, South America. There's also two separate. Um, uh, time frames for 2015, which are uh, U.S. and Europe again. Uh, I would love to come to India. We, we've had uh, two offers in India so far, but those offers have never uh, materialized to get us over there. But, uh, we, you know, we keep trying because we know that the market is opening and has become open to, uh, to touring. So you can do more than just one show, but you can do three, uh, three shows in India, which would be, uh, which would be fantastic. Because I love seeing these places, man. That would be awesome. That will be an honor to see you guys live because the kind of music Overkill is known for, we are sure going to destroy our neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just wondering when am I going to see you guys live, but I'm very sure that, you know, we have seen many thrash bands from states coming into India and play. Now, the only band left out is Anthrax and Overkill. So we're just waiting for you guys to come over here. It will definitely be an honor. Well, I, I tell you, I mean, you know, and an honor for us too, because you know, I think one of the things that you know the monitor has brought to us all over the world with regard to you know, especially our communication um, and especially especially information. So it doesn't feel so far away anymore, but still feels like an exciting place because it's uh, because it's a new place for us. Absolutely. Bobby, uh, what about live? I would like to ask one question to you. Uh, you've been on stage for like decades and decades. And how does it feel for you when, when you know, you are unleashing hell and you see fans taking the cell phone and recording the entire thing? Does it annoy you or it's like part of the show? You know, it, it's become part of the show. And I think one of the reasons that Overkill has been able to slide at a level uh, that we have is that we've always kind of embraced change. Uh, I think that, you know, from a personal level, I'm an older guy. I'm one of the old dogs. <laughs> you know, I would never go to a concert and film a concert because I would miss the concert while I was filming it. Yeah. <laughs> so much. You know, I like to experience it. You know, I, 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 don't like to, I don't like to look at it. I like to experience it. So it's a different thing for me. So not a personal choice. But it never bothers me. It's, 
it's it's the way the world has changed. Absolutely. And and there's there's it makes no sense to stop it. it, it that's what people want to do. That I always say, hey man, it's your choice. That's uh, do what you'd like. I would rather watch the show. You film the show. How wonderful! Very well said, Bobby. Now let me end the interview on a very simple question for you. Uh, if I would have to ask you to define new album White Devil Armory in just one sentence. White Devil Armory is contemporary value that has been taken from the past. Thank you so much, Bobby. You spent some time today. It's been an honor. Definitely looking forward to see you live. Okay, I'll talk to you. Thanks for your time.